My sister-in-law, 29, is trying to turn my husband, 29, against me, 28. My significant other and I recently eloped. We decided a big wedding like we had been planning was not for us and eloped. My family was fine off the bat. I have a great relationship with them and they understood where I was coming from, complete acceptance. My significant other's family was less accepting, especially his mother and twin sister. For years it was just the three of them before his mother remarried and had a few more children. But because of this, his sister and mother are still very dependent on him. They were hurt because they were looking forward to everything that comes with the wedding. The weekend away, pretty dresses, us paying for them to stay in a nice hotel, fancy food, free drinks. Not necessarily because we were getting married. Hopefully that gives everyone a small idea to how selfish and entitled they are. This all occurred in the beginning of July. We decided that after our quick elopement that we would extend our already planned European vacation from one week to two weeks from July 25th until August 9th. Initially, we were going to board our pug and have a neighbor keep an eye on our condo, but being gone that long, we thought the best idea would be to have someone stay there. Enter sister-in-law. Significant others suggested that she house it for us. She would be cheaper than any other option. We could trust her, and she loves our dog. Seemed to be the perfect solution. Shortly before our trip, significant other informed me that sister-in-law was thinking of moving to our city from hers, Springfield to Chicago, and would be looking for a job while staying in our place, hoping to interview while she was up here. Not a problem. She has always been really inconsistent with work and maybe a change of scenery from living with her mom is what she needs. It was never discussed that she would be staying longer than the two weeks or would need to. The day that we leave, she shows up on the Amtrak, with three large suitcases. Now, I was already frazzled, so didn't think anything more than, wow, and I thought I was an overpacker. But in hindsight, that should have been my first red flag. But we leave and have a fantastic vacation. We check in a few times and everything is just great at home. We get home and everything is clean, well taken care of, and my pug is still a fat, lazy lump of fur. But I love him so. So she did a great job and is deserving of the money. We got home late on the 9th, so didn't see her until the 10th. I had the day off, but she never asked for a ride to Union Station or any indication that she was returning home. Figured that she must have arranged it with significant other. I go to bed early without asking significant other what is going on. Go to work as normal on Tuesday assuming she has left, and come home on Tuesday to her sitting on my couch eating something and watching TV. What? I call significant other. He says that she needs to stay for a few weeks. She told him that she has a job lead and that she has another interview next week. If she doesn't get the job, then she will go back to Springfield, but would like to continue to job search from our place. I am not happy that he gave her permission to live here without speaking to me, but he is blind when it comes to his sister and mother, so this is something we need to continue to work on. I agree to a week extra, as long as she focuses on job search. Fast forward to last weekend, August 15th. Sister-in-law has completely taken over my condo in this short time. She monopolizes my living room, eats all of our food, then complains there is no food left. Tells me that she doesn't want any guests using her bathroom, aka the guest bathroom, when they are over. Has brought over some guy to have S with and has very loud S with him while significant other and I are trying to have dinner. And just makes catty comments in general towards my husband about how I seem to run the household and tells stories about how he was always a sissy growing up. I decided I can't put up with it for any longer and talk to significant other about it. He agrees, but acknowledges that with his mother, sister, he has no backbone and he knows that he will cave. So I talk to her. I tell her that while she is part of our family, we feel that she has taken advantage of us at this point and I need to know what her plans to leave are because this is no longer working for me and significant other. She tells me that significant other told her she could stay as long as she needs and that she wasn't planning on going back to Springfield at this point as her relationship with her mother is codependent and dangerous. She then insinuates that if I send her back that significant other will turn against me. I tell her that she has a week. I know significant other and her threats will not work and I can promise her that she does not want to make him pick between us because he will see what she is really trying to do. So that didn't go well at all. Things quieted down and she had her interview on Monday, 
She has been ignoring me for the past few days because significant other says that it went well and she is anticipating getting the job. He said that she spoke of staying with us, but he held strong, saying that unless there was something crazy that happened, she would have to go. If she had to start the job as soon as possible, then we could possibly help her with finding a place. We buy her an Amtrak ticket for Saturday morning. Well, wouldn't you guess it? Something crazy happens on Friday just before she has to leave. I get a text from my significant other. We need to talk when you get home. I am worried you relapsed. Some context. I am in recovery for kleptomania. Since I was a child, I stole just to steal, not because I needed something or had no money, but just because. I have not stolen since before significant other and I started dating, so about three years, and have done extensive therapy throughout the years to deal with this. I have been very candid about this with everyone, including mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Mother-in-law called significant other on Friday morning, telling him that sister-in-law called her in tears on Thursday night. She noticed that some of her clothes had gone missing and that one of her rings was gone as well. She took it upon herself to search my room, finding the ring on my dresser and searching through my closet where she found the clothing. She told him that they understand that my job is stressful and that having sister-in-law staying with us added some stress, so they weren't upset and wouldn't take any further action, but that they were truly concerned. Sister-in-law found several pieces of clothing that had tags on them, buried in my closet by her clothes. They believe that I have started shoplifting again in addition to stealing from sister-in-law. I did not relapse. I did not buy those clothes, and I believe they either were clothes she purchased and it was just the perfect circumstance, or that she purchased them to set me up. I come home to an interview of sorts. Sister-in-law and significant other sitting in my living room with her clothes, rings, and the stolen clothes all laid out. She has him completely believing this. My significant other looks distraught. He wants to help me and fully believes that I have relapsed. Sister-in-law volunteers to stay with us. She is a CADC and feels that some of her skills could be there to help me. Significant other is heartbroken. He feels that he caused this by bringing stress into my life, taking all of the blame off sister-in-law. I am at a loss. The past 36 hours have been a nightmare. Whenever she is alone with significant other, she keeps planting seeds of doubt about my recovering, hinting that I seem to be wearing clothes that are above my pay grade, but I don't have any debt, so where is this all coming from? And when we talk, I can see the wheels of doubt turning in his head. Is she stealing again? Is my sister right? I have tried to explain this to significant other, and it seems that now he believes me, but he cannot imagine that his sister would try to frame me like this. He knows his mother and sister have issues, but to him, they would never try to hurt him, especially by attacking me. To me, it is obvious that sister-in-law and mother-in-law have always been able to manipulate significant other to do whatever they wanted. And had I not been in the picture, sister-in-law would have moved in without issue. Since I wasn't going along with her plan, she had to do something to disrupt it. I don't know how to handle this with her, or with my mother-in-law. I know that significant other and I can recover from this, but I am worried that it will be at the cost of his relationship with his sister and mother. How do I broach this with my husband in the long run? Based on their past behavior, especially the sister, I am nervous this is going to become a long-term problem between us. So how do I communicate to him, you pick me or I walk? And how do I mitigate this now, getting her out? Do I bother trying to clear my name with the stealing? I don't want to get overly defensive. After reading everything, I gave significant other an ultimatum. Either sister-in-law left that night, or I did, and would leave him. I am not going to be put after his manipulative sister and mother in the pecking order. So it was her or me at this point. He agreed she would go, but we both knew it would not be pretty. We decided to offer to pay for a hotel and Amtrak ticket if she refused at first, hoping this could be a bargaining tool to get her to agree. I show significant other the previous thread, and he initially said nothing, but went directly to our guest room and packed everything of hers up quickly. He then apologized for everything. I told him that we both know this is more than his sister trying to claim residency in our condo, and we have to resolve this or it will eat at our marriage. He agreed to go to therapy with me, and if need be, go to therapy on his own. He doesn't want to let this destroy our marriage. He had a really frank discussion about my recovery, 
I explained to him that if I was stealing again, it would be obvious, as we would have random things around the house that we didn't have before. I wouldn't have been able to restrain myself to a few shirts if I relapsed. He was really supportive and apologetic. He trusted his sister due to her experience with addictions, but seemed to understand that this was just manipulation on her part. She ended up showing up late Saturday, letting herself into the condo like it was just a normal day. It took her all of a minute to see her bags. Significant other pushed her bags out in the hall, and when she tried to get them, he shut them both out there. I left them alone because he needed to do this on his own, without me. I heard her crying, and I know he offered to take her to a hotel and pay for her train. She told him to duck off. After a little bit, she started throwing a fit in the hall and was sobbing loud enough that the whole floor could probably hear. I could make her out saying that he was abandoning her in her time of need, and that the bee has to stop controlling you. I'm your family. It took every ounce of restraint for me not to go slap a bee, but significant other reminded me that she is trying to agitate me. Eventually, my neighbor couldn't take anymore and texted me that he called the good old Chicago Police Department to get her to shut up. Cops came a little later. They spoke to her first because she was currently camped out in the hall. She told them that she wanted me arrested for kicking her out of her home. I had a feeling she would pull this, and for stealing from her. She told them I was trying to steal her purse. It was in the kitchen where she dropped it prior to significant other pushing her out. A ring and a few outfits. Plus, I was stealing from stores. I told the nice officer about the whole incident, including her allegations. Significant other backed me up that she was setting me up, and this was all really family issues, not legal. At this point, they told her not only had she attempted to file a false police report, but she was disturbing the peace for no reason. She told them she had nowhere to go, but after telling the police she lived in Springfield and had come up here to house sit, they noped her residency claim. Cops told us that because she claimed to have no money, had no car, and her residence was so far away that we had two options because we can't just kick her out with nowhere to go. Either let her stay until she can arrange for a method home, aka we get her a train ticket tomorrow, or we take her home right then and there, but there is only one way that they can guarantee she will be gone tomorrow morning. Significant Other and I talked about it. We were concerned letting her stay an additional night would just make this worse, and we would be right back where we started. We opted to drive her home. She agreed to this without much issue. I think the cops made her realize that her little plot was over. The beginning of our drive was pretty awful. She cried for the first hour, laid the guilt on thick. He's caused her so much stress. He doesn't care about her. Can't he see what I'm trying to do? She's only looking out for him. They are twins, their bond is stronger than ours. And I don't want kids, so how could he want to stay with me? I'll admit that I fed into her a bit with some name calling, delusional, stupid bee, insane, but I had reached my breaking point, not my proudest moment. After a while, significant other and I put on an audiobook and just ignored her, which worked. She slept the rest of the time while significant other and I were both just wired with anxiety. By the time we get to mother-in-law's house, it was around 2 a.m. and we drop her off without incident. Mother-in-law calls us as we are about 15 minutes away, tells significant other that I am a cancer on their family, and told him that he had to stand up to me and choose his family for once. Holy delusional. He told his mother that he picked me, and he is sorry she feels that it has to be one or the other, but she made that choice, not him. The drive home, significant other poured everything out. Apparently, his childhood abuse goes so much further than he has shared before. Sister-in-law would regularly physically and mentally torment him, but when he would tell his mother, she would blame him. He agreed that he thought the distance was enough to deal with everything, but he needs more than that. He also needs to come to terms that his relationship with his mother, sister, half-siblings, and stepfather may be over. He was scared to admit how bad it was, and I hate that it took his sister behaving like this for it to come out. It's absolutely heartbreaking. We took the day off, slept a lot, watched some Rick and Morty, went to a fairly productive therapy session, and are eating some awesome pizza. It's hard to sit back and realize what was my relationship kind of crumbled this weekend, but I have faith that we can each work on our relationship and ourselves. When we turned significant other's phone back on, there were several voicemails and numerous text messages from both sister-in-law and mother-in-law apologizing for everything. 
Significant Other and I have talked about him going completely zero contact with both sister-in-law and mother-in-law. I think changing our phone numbers is a good place to start, but he is apprehensive. He is worried about emergencies, but I don't want to give them any further opportunity to sabotage our relationship. This is absolutely the right move, correct? I am thinking of finding him a specialty therapist to assist with this, but I don't know where to start or what questions I should be asking with such family issues. Where should we start with this? A bit of an update. It has been two weeks since we removed sister-in-law from our residence and was a doozy have they been. I could actually use some advice going forward since everyone was so great before. We had a few peaceful days since returning home, got back into our routines, went to therapy, and got my significant other set up with an individual therapist on his own. We didn't end up changing either of our numbers for other reasons, but agreed that if they couldn't respect our wishes, then we would just have to block their numbers entirely. It wasn't an issue until this past weekend. On Friday, significant other's younger brother, who was 16 and living at home, called him. He wanted to give him a heads up that mother-in-law and sister-in-law were coming up here to visit some family members. They decided to bring him with so he could see significant other. Even he knew that this didn't smell right. Significant other freaked out. He realized that they were going to manipulate him into seeing them by using his younger brother as bait. He was right. I was out of town by this point already for a bachelorette party, leaving my significant other alone and not at all prepared to deal with his family and me not being able to get home until Sunday. Younger brother calls on Saturday to let significant other know that he would like to see him. They have some time before they head home and are in our neighborhood for some reason. Significant other and younger brother get to hang out for a few hours in our home. They play some video games, eat some takeout, and just have a nice afternoon of brother bonding. Younger brother tells significant other that he doesn't believe what my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have been saying, but that they have done nothing but bash me on their social media pages. He pulled their pages up on his phone and was able to give a screenshot of them to significant other. One of them said, Well, that hoity witch has managed to brainwash my son again. Please pray that Jesus will deliver him from the devil that he lays with. She is nothing short of a cancer on my life, and I worry that this will drive me to illness. Pray for us all. I just can't even with this. She's not even religious, but anyway. Significant other kept it together for the rest of their visit. At the end, both mother-in-law and sister-in-law attempted to come up to the condo, but he was able to keep them downstairs, only speaking to them outside. Sister-in-law then dropped a B on significant other. She's been severely depressed and needed him. She miscarried recently, and it has been awful on her. She just needed her twin to comfort her. Neither of us had an idea that this happened. I get home early yesterday, and I can read the conflict on his face. And we fought about it. My frustration with mother-in-law and sister-in-law is at its peak, especially after seeing the barrage of Facebook posts. He agrees that those are over the line, but that most are from mother-in-law. True, but sister-in-law had two that were passive-aggressive and clearly aimed towards me. So it wouldn't be fair to hold his sister-in-law accountable for those. I disagree. She made these choices that got us to this place. She literally started this entire thing, not us, and now she has to deal with the consequences, regardless of whatever trauma she may have endured that spurred this on. And, honestly, I don't necessarily believe that she really had a miscarriage. Our fight consisted of name-calling, him calling me insensitive and cold, me calling him naive and manipulated, and bickering. Which is a lot, considering we normally only fight over whose house is better on Game of Thrones. We spoke after our fight yesterday and were able to move on from it, but then today we both could feel tension and it was only amplified when he told me he was texting sister-in-law to check on her. I feel like we have regressed, and now I am back behind sister-in-law in the pecking order when I feel that I should be first. I deserve to be first, right? So how do I handle this? Is it best just to jump into couples therapy? This is something we both think is a good place to go, but not necessarily right now. Do I suggest we go no contact until we get a clearer idea? I don't want to feel guilty if his sister really went through that and I take away her support. But at the same point, I need to put my marriage first. Part of me just wants to confront my sister-in-law and tape the conversation because I know her and know she won't be able to not gloat to me. My marriage is my number one priority at the end of the day. How do I convey that I need it to be his too without coming off as selfish?